That uh, was um, like a modern opera. It's a modern opera, is right. Um, that was really great to hear from Alan Mar- Marshall about the uh, the what march, an impressive the civil guy. rights what opera. A friendly I guy. Guess, really? I guess we're going to the opera tomorrow. I guess so. <laughs> Well, we are so happy to have um, a champion, a friend, uh, a neighbor across town, and uh, this is the kind of neighbors Chicago needs more of, folks who know each other from one side of the city to the next. Uh, Ricardo Rick Munoz, an independent Chicago alderman for 18 years now. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, yesterday uh, was my 19th year anniversary. 19 years in the city council. We, does What was the... What year were you first? Did you first enter? 1993. 93. When our good friend Jesus Garcia became a state senator, I got to the city council. That's great. Well, you've you've done some great work for the city of Chicago, Rick. I just want to acknowledge that. Two of my that. favorite guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Exactly. And so the reason we've got you here now, although we'll utilize this opportunity to talk to you about many different things. things. That's but, the beauty of being an alderman, is that you have to be an expert at everything. From that's right. From plowing snow to picking up garbage. To and speaking of snow, it is snowing again as we speak. And, and I, big I really fluffy like it. snow. And though. the plows are out there making uh, Chicago safer. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> we, we know how to get rid of snow here. Who's um, in head Rick of the Munoz, snow now, Tom Byrne? Yes, he is. He used Commissioner to be Burr. the commander over here in Como? the 20th. Oh, Tom in our, Burr. In our police district. Our yeah. dude. Our old, our fifth, yes. Uh, Rick Munoz, um, you are running for the office of the clerk of the Circuit Court of Cook County. One, once you figure out how to tell people in a short soundbite what that is, what job that is, um, how do you keep people from, you know, glazing over in the eyes in terms of, is this a job that makes a difference in their lives, well, and first, what? Yeah, well, the title says it all. It's a clerk. Uh, it's a ministerial position that uh, administers and services all 469 judges of the Cook County Circuit Courts. And how many levels of, uh, is, that, is that appellate as well, or is it just the... What courts does it, that include? It, it, That's it, a it, heck of a it, lot of it's judges. It's all of the courts in the circuit court, which goes up to appellate also. It does. Uh, and uh, it basically has a annual budget of $73 million. It has 2,000 employees. Uh, 2,000. Plus or minus 2,000 employees. And these are basically the clerks that make the courtrooms run. And as you know, uh, our economy uh, has uh, basically caused a whole lot of hurt. Uh, all over, and in our society, uh, we can't function without a properly running court system. Uh, and um, in today's economy, we need to see how we can save the taxpayers some money. And without having folks glaze over, uh, I want to bring some efficiencies to that office where we can save the taxpayers some money and work with uh, with County Board President Tony Preckwinkle on how to make the county more efficient. What's what's not going right with the circuit court oh, the, the, running the office, now? The office is in dire need of some reform, and let me just uh, tell you a story. Um, back in 2001, when Clerk Brown uh, started her uh, her career as clerk of the circuit court, uh, in her own transition report, she mm-hmm. has a 200-page transition report, uh, talks about how the office needs to be brought out of uh, the dark the ages, 1980s, uh-huh. the 1980s. How the office is antiquated. How they still use carbon paper. Remember that? Carbon I, copy I paper? Do yeah, they we get it all smudgy. We're old. We remember carbon well, paper. I, I, <laughs> we remember I have Stetner machines. The, the, yes. Uh, <laughs> I remember carbon paper as a uh, something from the 1980s because it was 1982 yeah. when I was a junior in high school, the last time I used carbon paper. Yeah, they developed thermal paper after and then, that. And then they had a yeah, carbonized <laughs> paper. That's what right. high school? Uh, uh, I ended up graduating from Holy Name Cathedral. Uh, Holy Name, uh, all right. Uh, a Catholic high school that was right there on Chicago and State, class of 83. Red McLaughlin. Uh, so, in her own report from 2001, she talks about how needing to computerize the process, computerize the, uh, uh, make it more the efficient, systems. the systems. Mm-hmm. And today, she today, still hasn't done less it. than two tenths of 1% of the cases are electronic. And that's just not fair. Uh, in today's day and age, the federal government, uh, the federal courts have been uh, uh, using electronic filing, e-filing, now for 16 years. Uh, DuPage, Kane, and Will, 
have electronic filing. In DuPage County, 90% of the cases are electronically filed. And there's no reason why you know lawyers and plaintiffs and defendants can view their cases uh, via the internet in order to be able to then just make the court more efficient. Mm -hmm. Right now, a lot of time is wasted uh, in moving the cases around, moving the files around from courtroom to courtroom. Isn't and it's just totally inefficient. And it, we, we can save the taxpayers some money. I mean, uh, President Preckwinkle, I mean, uh, Tony Alderman Tony Preckwinkle, now President Preckwinkle of the yes. uh, County Board, who's a good friend of mine ha and has endorsed my candidacy, uh, attempted to uh, deal with this issue and was told uh, by Clerk Brown that it's just not doable. I mean, how can we in this this day and age where you know apps? exists for everything. Right. You got an app for finding a Starbucks, you got an app for filing documents with your bank. Uh, th there are apps for everything. Why can't there be an application uh, that can be used for uh, being able to efficiently electronically file at the clerk's office? There are 1.5 million cases filed every year. Imagine the paperwork. Now, does this, is, does the normal, do civil cases that normal everyday citizens can be involved in, do they, they are part of the, that 1.2 million cases? Yes. So, simple civil cases. Traffic, in civil, other words, criminal. People who are not criminals still uh, are at the uh, beck and call of the civil, of the clerk of the uh, circuit court. When they, they are do still civil served. Cases. Yes, yes. Uh, the civil division, uh, which is the third largest division, uh, also uh, is in dire. I mean, the entire system is in dire need. How long has uh, Clerk Brown been in office? Well, she was elected back in 2000. So I remember. She's had I, 11 years. I think our alderman ran uh, against her in the primary back then. Actually. Yeah, and she was a guest on this show when Mike Stevens was with, was with us. Yeah. How long ago was that? <clears throat> uh, about 10 years, 11 it would be years. A long time ago. Well, yeah, it's about time. I mean, part of the reason I love my job as an alderman is that uh, I'm held accountable every day uh, on day-to-day -day issues in my neighborhood, whether it's plowing the snow, picking up the garbage. Uh, no one sure, is held more accountable. Making sure that the police do their job effectively and safely. Mm -hmm. uh, and what I want to do is bring that sort of accountability to the clerk of the circuit court. Uh, what I want to do is bring that sort of energy, vi uh, vitality, and reform credentials. I mean, you got to re remember that uh, a lot of times uh, the clerk of the circuit court, for lack of a better word, is stuck in the 1980s. Uh, it is antiquated. And uh, if she said she would do it in 2001, and it's now 2012, yep. what's wrong with that math? I mean, right now, less than two-tenths of one percent of the cases are electronically filed when she herself claimed in 2001 that she wanted to do this. And it's a matter of uh, accountability. It's a matter of effectiveness. Uh, I, I, I love uh, telling people about you know, the types of reforms, the, type, the, the types of innovation that we've been able to bring uh, to the city council as a result of our fights. Our fights are independent, reform-minded fights, uh, you know, previously with uh, Mayor Daly and now uh, learning to work with Mayor Emanuel, how we uh, were able to change the way things happen. And uh, one, of the, one of the things we did early in my career back in the mid-90s is when I was a, uh, an eighth grader, when I graduated from eighth grade from Robert Burns Elementary back uh, in 1979, my eighth grade math class was in a hallway. When I became an alderman uh, in 1993, I went back to my alma mater and visited that grammar school, a public grammar school, and that eighth grade math class was still in that <laughs> hallway. So we made it our mission to challenge the bureaucrats. We went to uh, the Board of Ed, the City of Chicago, the Public Building Commission, and we said, how can we, do this? how can we do this differently so that we can relieve the overcrowding problem in the 22nd Ward in the entire City of Chicago because there was some overcrowding problems all over? And the bureaucrats says, said, basically, we can't do anything about it. And we said, yes, we can. Uh, yes, we can do something about it. And we proposed, I proposed that we do this quote unquote out of the box thinking of how do you marry the bonding capacity of the Public Building Commission, the Board of Ed, and the City of Chicago in order to uh, make more money available for capital spending, for, for building schools. And the bureaucrats for a year and a half said it couldn't be done, it couldn't be done, it couldn't be done. Uh, and we kept hammering away, talking to the mayor, talking to the Board of Ed, talking to the Public Building Commission, telling these bureaucrats it can be done. So in 1995, when Gary Chico and Paul Vallis took the Board of Education over, the first thing they did, 
is they married the bonding capacity of those three agencies. And what did that mean? That meant that we had the largest capital expenditures between 1995 and 2001 that allowed for the construction of a ton of new schools all over the city. But more importantly, five new grammar schools and one new high school all within two miles in my neighborhood to relieve the overcrowding. So that innovation, that push, nice that drive. Nice work, Rick. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, that drive uh, that we told the bureaucrats, and I, and, and, and I, I like telling, t telling the story because uh, bureaucrats think that they're part of the B team, uh, that elected officials are part of the A team. The A team is just who's around at, uh, after that election cycle, and the B team is the bureaucrats that'll be there when you got there, and they'll be there when you left. Right. And those bureaucrats just kept saying, it can't be done, it can't be done, it can't be done. I told Mayor Daly, I told Gary Chico, I told the Board of uh, Public Building Commission, listen guys, if we marry the bonding capacity of our three agencies, we will be able to bond out, to take out a mortgage. Uh -huh. of roughly about four to five hundred million dollars that can go directly to capital improvements, can go directly to building new schools because in my neighborhood all eight of my schools in 1994 were 140% severely overcrowded and that's the kind of innovation. That's the kind of drive. So, That's the kind of reforms that I want to bring to the clerk of the circuit court's office where we won't let the bureaucrats tell us it can't be done. In fact, streamlining the circuit court's office will involve uh, sending Dealing some people with a home. a lot of bureaucrats. You're going to have Not to... Not necessarily sending them home, retraining I, them. You're going to have some pink slips go out. There's a big difference uh, between uh, shuffling files. Which is okay. Files. Yeah, there's a big difference between shuffling files back and forth between courtrooms and making them available with the click of a Online. mouse. So mm -hmm. folks, uh, not it's not necessarily a reduction in force, it's a retraining in force. Uh, but uh, you know, we anticipate there will be some savings. I mean, our back of the napkins, uh, back of the napkin analysis is that we can save anywhere from 20 to 25% of her budget. Her budget is a $73 million budget every year to process these 19, 20 million, what are, what are called case transactions. Yeah. No, that's okay. way and too much. Th it's, it's just way too much paperwork being shuffled when all you got to do is turn on the computer. Let me ask, how does the election look? You've got the endorsement of Tony Preckwinkle. Um, <clears throat> is this, uh, is this going to come down to African Americans, Latinos, whites, progressives? How will that divide up? What kind of support do you have across the, the spectrum of our rainbow population? Uh, how is it looking in your polling? Uh, what kind of uh, campaign has the opposition mounted? Our support is widespread. I mean, um, having been an alderman now for uh, 19 years, I'm very used to basically living in my ward. Yes. Uh, but now that I'm running countywide, I'm discovering parts of New Trier, Wheeling, Palatine, uh, Rogers Park. Yep. Uh, although I'm a good friends with your alderman here, uh, Joe Moore, that I, I, I come and visit. Yes, but you do. N n not as often, <laughs> uh, not as much as I'm doing now that I'm running for countywide office. It's a big county. I'm going down the Rich Township, Bloom Township, Proviso. Uh, it's a big county, and the campaign is going great. Our our support is widespread. Uh, the, a large portion of the city council members are with me because they understand because they know me. Yeah, they know I would me. imagine they know be. that I'm a hard worker. They know that I do my homework. They know that we're very, very measured in how we approach reforming government because what we want to do is we want to reform government without blowing it up. I mean, we know that government is necessary for a number of functions. We know that, in this case, the clerk of the circuit's court's office does need to be reformed. Does need to, there needs to be some innovative changes over there, uh, and we need to do it right to be able to service the courts. Uh, but the campaign goal is, is, is coming along great, uh, and those that know me best are with me. That's why, you know, former alderman and now president uh, Tony Preckwinkle, uh, she likes my ideas, she's supporting my campaign, she likes the kind of innovation. I will work with her, not against her. Uh, in this last budget, uh, when uh, President Preckwinkle asked all of the elected officials, all the countywide elected officials to uh, reduce their budgets by 7%, uh, she had to fight with clerk uh, Dorothy Brown uh, over that issue. And th 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 there was some give and take as to what she would, uh, what she would do or not do. And I will work, uh, you know, my campaign promise is to work with President Preckwinkle to make sure that we bring that office 
out of the 1980s, bring it into the 21st century, even though it's already 2012, you know, 12 years into the century, and make sure that we provide electronic filing in an efficient, automated way that judges can do their job. Okay, so um, we're talking about we're talking with uh, Alderman Rick Munoz about his run for the uh, s clerk of the Circuit Court of Cook County. Um, we're going to. Uh, let you know that it is uh, definitely different from the office held by Clerk uh, David Orr, who, uh, has he come out in favor of your candidacy, or is he We're, we're, we're talking. We're, we're talking. You're talking. Okay. The politics plane continues. I well, think we're going to take, take a short break only because we want to come back and distinguish the other part of the conversation that we'll have when we ask Rick about a couple of aldermanic pieces of business facing well, him this Well, I want to ask about once immigration. An alderman, once an alderman, always an alderman. Indeed, indeed. So we'll, we, uh, we're going to take a short musical we're gonna break. We're going to take a musical break. Eli, it's, I'm sure you're ready down there, and uh, we're looking forward to whatever tune you put on us. You're listening to Live from the Heartland on, on WUW 88.7 Chicago Sound Alliance, the Live from the Heartland show. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. I 